Hey, welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we're heading all the way to 1992 and continuing on with my Fox Kids Retro October countdown on the Kenner side of the toy world. We're checking out the first wave of Batman the Animated Series, and what a line it was. Although it was very divisive amongst the fan community, me falling somewhere in the middle where I thought that it got a lot right... But oftentimes, it got a lot wrong and never really matched the source material. Now, the ultimate Batman that you absolutely needed for your Batman the Animated Series collection was, in fact, the Combat Belt Batman with his fire and grappling hook and missiles. The artwork and the packaging is always something that I remember from this line with its Neo Deco style that really emulated with the animated series. From the fonts to the photos to the layout all the artwork, and yes, I am well aware there are vehicles for Wave 1, but we're just taking a look at the figures today. Now, I'll throw you a little bit of a curveball here. The very first Batman that I got from the animated line was not the Combat Belt Batman, but in fact, this Turbojet Batman with his firing wrist rocket and pivoting engines. And as to why I picked him, well, all I got for you is that he looked really cool on the shelf. The Robin figure was the ultimate action figure that I wanted when these came out. With his turbo glider and drop missiles, remember my dad surprised me one night and I was just beyond the moon. Now, with the Penguin figure, this was an interesting one. One that really did not match the source material in many ways, but oddly enough, the Hypno Spin Umbrella Launcher went from Peg Warmer to one of the rarest Batman the Animated Series figures in recent times, Two-Face. Had a very interesting gimmick to him. Also, he was exceptionally blinged out for some reason. But he came with his firing roulette wheel gun. And I always remember that as being one of the coolest accessories that I had gotten as a child. The Riddler really made things interesting as well. Most of these figures all came with a firing mechanism of some sort. And with his question mark launcher, that's really where I got the idea that every toy I had needed some sort of spring-loaded mechanism, right? Which was very cool. And as far as vehicle and figure combo sort of mushed together with its turbo sound and motorized turbo power, we had Batman and his Bat Cycle, which, well, let's hope this still works. But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a retro shiz look back at the 1992 Batman, the animated series, Wave 1 by Kenner. And while I got all you Dark Deco enthusiasts here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids, and if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like, like a bunch of old cool toys. So we'll go ahead and kick it off with the Turbo Jet Batman. As to why I picked this figure over Combat Belt Batman, well, he just had a cool-looking jetpack to him. That's really all I got for you. And he had a sweet yellow missile. Uh, it wasn't warped back in the day like it is now, but it was uh, pretty easy not to lose, I will say that. The whole wrist rocket firing mechanism was pretty cool. It clipped on via the two clips right there, and it had a little button on the back which would activate the spring-loaded missile rocket firing action. Now, I do miss these days because... Oh, they were just so much fun. Nothing was better than pushing a button and having it shoot out and hit an enemy and take a bunch of characters down. And to top off the missile launcher, we had a sweet Rocketeer-inspired backpack. And that is very befitting of a character like Batman. And I love the dark deco design that is all over this. It's awesome to see that. And yes, I'm well aware it's missing a little clip right there that would go around Batman's waist. My grandfather actually figured out a little cheat for me with that all those years ago and sort of kept it that way. But the whole helmets, the rocketeer fin on the back, and the wings that would rocket out and jet propulsion Batman through the sky, well, that was just very cool. So I liked all the articulation on it, especially the fact that you had a little bit of weapon storage right here where you could clip on the rocket firing mechanism and you could store it perfectly on his back and that just really added to the fun factor and the overall design of the figure now the figure itself he did come with the cloth cape so that's always nice to see but this batman was the furthest from let's say a classic batman the animated series batman because well 
He had all sorts of straps and such all over him, which coincided with the whole rocket firing mechanism and everything else with this character. The design was great, though. The symbol on his chest, everything looked good. He did have minimal articulation in the head, the arms, and, of course, the legs, which, of course, that was the sort of articulation that we got back in the day, and it was a lot of fun, especially with the cloth cape. You can't beat a good old cloth cape, but you would simply just remove the cape as such and pop the backpack on, and bingo, bango, yeah, you got yourself a really cool-looking turbo jet Batman, and everything worked, and as you can see, yeah, I use twisty ties. Those are from ancient days, and you line up your missile and take a shot at the Riddler, boom! He ain't gonna be asking no more questions. That's for sure. I got that on my first try. How about that? This is an awesome figure. One that I still think about to this day. All the rocket firing mechanisms and whatnot. I absolutely love the Turbojet Batman. Now next up is Robin with his Turbo Glider. And I remember watching the commercial as a little kid and going, I have to have that. That is the coolest figure ever. And he had these missiles, which again, very much enveloped the Batman, the animated series deco design, very much that 1920s to 50s sort of style. And they're just awesome. You get two of them, they plug into the top of the glider and you push them down onto the unsuspecting villains. The glider itself, bright yellow, red, all the little mechanisms on there all sculpted in along with the thrusters on the side. Again, very cool. And then on top of that, you had a control stick at a laser gun blaster. Of course he did. But it was the yellow coupled with the R on top of the glider that just resonated with me so well as a kid. It was just awesome. And again, plugging in the missiles, dropping the missiles. It's just a lot of fun and had a lot of play feature for me as a kid. Robin himself. Now keep in mind, I did play with these toys into the ground. So if you see some Red gunk amidst the yellow cape right there. Well, I got a hold of some slime one day and distinctly remember covering Robin in there. I got most of it out, but hey, it's it's still there, right? So you got to have those memories. There is some paint fade here and there. And again, this is a reuse of a prior release Robin for the movie line, but it was just a fun Robin. It was my Tim Drake costume but Dick Grayson was wearing it in the animated series, and I just thought that was the coolest thing. So you pop the cape off, you get the arms up, and you get the glider going. And bingo, bango, you just swooping in, just like the commercial. That was so much fun to see. Now, over the years, the gun and the little handle contraption have kind of warped, right, in their own way. So you're not going to get some straightforward motion out of those anymore. But... It was just a lot of fun, and the ability to just hover over the villains and drop a grenade bomb, that was so much fun. Ah, oh, man, I had the time of my life with this figure, and I just distinctly remember everything about it. And I like that you could move the glider around. You could even keep him just standing straight up and down. You didn't have to have it moving. You didn't have to have it constantly up. It was just kind of a hang glider that was built specifically for Robin, and for that... I just very much appreciate it. And I could drop these bombs all day. This was one of the best. Absolutely love it. And along with that Robin and the Turbo Jet, we had the Bat Cycle Batman. And this is one where I had a lot of fun with it, but it drove me nuts as a kid because you could not take Batman off of it. But it had a mechanism where you would essentially rev it up like a pull speed car, right? And it would rocket forward. And you had the same sort of cape that clipped on. You had Batman's big old butt right there. See, a lot of the sculpting design, I get it. You have to make it work with the functionality of the toy. But that's not to say everything looked right. Thank God for that cape, right? <laughs> Covered up a lot. And one thing that drove me absolutely bonkers as a kid was that Batman could never properly grip the handlebars. Man. That drove me absolutely insane. And don't take this thing in the bath. It will rust. <laughs> hey, it's still standing though, right? So you would get said bat cycle and rev it up. And uh, you get some traction to going, right? And then you would essentially just release it. <laughs> well, back in the day, it sure worked a whole heck of a lot better. Yeah, he's uh, kind of showing his age a little bit. That's not as sturdy as it used to be. But it still displays really well. And for that, it's an excellent addition to your Batman animated line. 
Now, moving on to the villains side of thing. We have the penguin, which I took one look at this as a kid and I thought, that's that's not the penguin, right? That's not from the animated series, especially his contraption, which is an umbrella, right? Essentially, and it would twist and mesmerize and you get the idea. But this was definitely one of those figures that I passed on as a kid and got it much later, especially with his little clip-on accessory, which that umbrella attaches to. It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. It kind of looks like a bomb in some sense. And when it fires, well, I'll just go ahead and show you. It's very much lackluster. It's not spring-loaded in that sense where you would expect it to rocket fire off. So in the sense of playing with this, if you wanted to shoot it at Batman and Robin, it really did do much for the play feature. And with the Penguin himself, he was very bulky. He had this large cloth jacket, cape, sort of the style that he wore from the animated series, even though it doesn't match up to his sleeves. And man, oh man, does this collect dust, hairs, and every other microfibers that's floating around. I'll tell you what, it's crazy. And yeah, the sleeves don't match the coat. They're gray to the black. You have minimal articulation in the head and the arms and the legs. It's basically five steps forward and six steps back, we'll just say. It's a penguin from the animated series, but not quite the penguin we wanted. And much like the animated series, would it have killed him to throw in a cigarette for him to put in his mouth? <laughs> and yes, you can clip the weapon onto his arm and it looks pretty cool, right? He is aiming it at Batman and Robin, but it makes him incredibly top heavy. You will never be able to get him to stand. In fact, I would just advise flipping it over and using little handle parts and kind of coaxing it down to the ground and he'll stay just fine. Not the best figure of the wave, but certainly an interesting one. Now moving on, we're taking a look at District Attorney Harvey Dent, or rather what's left of him after a freak accident with Rupert Thorns' men. He does come with an accessory, and everything is basically in twos, right? Which definitely does fit the character of Two-Face, especially this. This, again, is one of those weapons I always seem to remember when I think of spring-loaded rocket firing because I just thought this was so cool. It has a dial where it says safe and fire, and depending on how you spin it, it will fire or it won't, which, again, the duality, the 50-50 split of Two-Face, right? So I always thought that was awesome, and it would fire tremendously, and it flew. This thing was awesome, but if you set it to safe, it wouldn't fire, and again, I always thought... That was so interesting. As a kid, why would you ever set it to safe? But now as an adult, I totally get it. That really is a nice accessory for a character like Two-Face. And when launching into Batman, boom! Takes him right out. But with the actual figure of Two-Face, which I really do think is one of the more spot-on renditions from the animated series, minus the whole blinged-out chain right now, you're probably thinking, when was that in the animated series? This is a toyetic way to get the coin in there, right? Good, evil, it's sort of a, a metal, if you will. Not exactly a home run in a design sense, but hey, it makes for a good talking point, right? But the paint was great, very crisp, the blue on his face, the human side, everything looked good with a very basic articulation scheme, which we all know by now, peg holes on the bottom. But it was just the look of this figure, which really resonated with me as a kid, that coupled with his accessory. I always liked the character of Two-Face, especially in the two-parter, which was just so amazing. Such a well-done episode. And when you have his firing Two-Face mechanism launcher, which you can sort of kind of get into his hand these days. It's, it's become a tighter grip over the years, but you get the idea and he still holds it well. And on top of that, with the accessory being so heavy, he surprisingly stands very well. So definitely a great toy for the animated series line. Now riddle me this. Have you ever seen a better Riddler action figure? Well, back in the day, this one was quite top notch. And with his whole question mark firing launcher, it was just, again, a nice accessory that brought forth the character of Edward Nigma, And especially with the whole question mark outline, right? And you had the button that was purple and you had basically two ways to hold this. That was just a nice touch. It was just awesome and you would fit the missile in and 
Bingo, bango, yeah, you got yourself a really cool question mark firing launcher. And again, that is a nice touch. That's just a fun toyetic way to bring forth the personality of these characters. But I think the top-notch accessory has to go to the Riddler's cane. Now, it should have had the question mark on top. Don't get me wrong. But again, that's showing me attention to detail from the show in kind of sort of way. But the Riddler himself, while he is very pre-posed, much like Two-Face, he was very spot on. He had all the Bruce Tim angles. He had peg holes on the bottom of his feet. Very much that stylistic design choice, but it works for this character. And he's surprisingly well balanced, which I totally appreciate. Although, like I said, very pre-posed in the articulation with the head, the arms, the legs. But that green, the black, the purple tie, the mask, everything very iconic with the Riddler, and for that I very much appreciate it, especially when you give him his accessories, his cane, he just looks so great, he stands well, this one again being a top-notch contender for one of the best in the wave, and to go from all these different accessories to all the different characters, when firing it at Robin and taking him down, boom, look at that, that is just so satisfying, again, this is one of the best in the Batman animated line. And now to finish off this first wave, we have the Combat Belt Batman. And like I said, this was the Batman to get and pretty much the only Batman that you would need if you wanted a true Batman the Animated Series collection. Now, he did come with a bunch of accessories, and that was the real fun of this figure, like this black missile right here that was essentially a battering. You also had some bat cuffs, which were interesting as well, right? Just giant yellow cuffs, which depending on the figure, kind of sort of worked, we'll say. They used the Riddler on the box, and the Riddler does work for the most part, although these days I would not advise bending it, right? Now, you do get the big yellow missile grappling hook launcher, and that was always cool and fun to play with, and they really did give you a nice long string on that one. That's fun, and that really shot out well, especially when aiming it at enemies, or if you wanted to, you could fit in the black battering and fire that as well. So you got two different options, nice play feature for the kids, but you need a belt to house all these accessories, and that's where the combat belt comes in. And again, much like all the accessories from the other figures, has that distinct Art Deco style to it, and that is where you could fit in the giant black battering, you could fit in the handcuffs for the most part, and you could affix the grapnel with the figure still being left to talk about, right? So the Batman figure, and yes, this was my original Batman figure. That was actually my sibling's first Batman figure, but it's found its way into my collection. But it's definitely showing its age, but it was played with heavily. He's even got a little tuft of his ear missing right there. But in recent years, I have found a very nice looking combat belt Batman. However, I do appreciate the more worn and torn one because it shows the love and the memories of everything that went into playing with this figure. But you would take the combat belt and as fix it as such, make sure everything's on there. The, the cuffs really don't want to stay. Just go ahead and put that in his hand. That'll save us some time, right? But the cape, the look of the figure, the coloring, all the accessories, kind of draping the cape over, right? It's, it's always very cool. I wish the capes were bigger. I even thought about that back in the day. I'm like, man, if they were just bigger and you could do that silhouette where he's just draped in the night, that was always cool to me. And in holding the grapnel, whether you want to go it's top-wise or underhanded, it was just always a lot of fun. These toys were amazing. And if you were wondering how all of these figures from Wave 1 scaled together, I would say fairly well. Two-Face and Riddler might be on the taller side. Riddler gets a little bit more height because of his bowler cap, but I think Penguin, Batman, and Robin all around the same height. And again, a fantastic first entry to the world of Batman the Animated Series. So that will wrap it up for my retro shiz look back at the 1992 Kenner Batman the Animated Series Wave 1 line of toys. Truly exceptional. Truly a lot of memories, and for me, as a kid playing with these, pretty much the last group of action figures that I actually played with. Moving on to Toy Biz, Spider-Man the Animated Series, that's where the collecting took hold, right? So this is a nice little nostalgic nod to my playing with toys days. 
but they were awesome toys nonetheless. But you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Batman the Animated Series. You can also tell me your very favorite Batman the Animated Series episode. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, if you want to see more Batman the Animated Series episodes, just comment below. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. We'll